okay, we're going to start out and do pressure points. We're all going to hit each other. And, uh, we grapple. When you get into pressure points, some pressure points only require a touch. Some require a rub. Some require a hit. A hit point, you must hit. A rub one, you must rub. A touch point, you only touch. Some people think because it's a touch point, if you hit it, it'll work better. That's entirely wrong. It is receptors in the body that trick that point, that particular area. You have millions of receptors all over your body that monitor the hot and the cold in this room. If this room is too cold, your motor will turn on. If the room is too hot, you will sweat. You have receptors that control every joint in the body. You're basically tricking those receptors. <coughs> the area to go after for pressure points is the size of a quarter, a 25 cent piece. What would you call it over here? 10 pence. 10 pence. 10 pence. It's this big. I teach 361 pressure points all over the human body. They're everywhere. They take a different angle and direction to attack them. I relate pressure points actually to the eye socket. If you look at somebody's eye and you put a 10 pence coin in the, in the socket, it would fill it in. Is that correct? Yes. Acupuncture wants to put a needle dead center. Today, if you look at the eye, would look for the needle, and I don't mean to put the needle in the eye, but they would look at the pupil as the center of the pressure point. So they would put their needle in the dead center. That could be the pupil of the eye. But as martial artists, we're not using a needle. We're using our hands, our fingers, our knuckles. When we attack pressure points, if you have a large hand, you sometimes just need one knuckle. If I punch, and punch like this, I overlap. Maybe I'll do eye damage, maybe not. Understand. But if I go like that, I will do eye damage. Understand? Yes? Okay. Some people with large hands, if they do pressure points on smaller people, <coughs> grab them and they overlap, the same as this. They cover up the pressure point because of their large hand. Taro was that way early on. Not now, he knows it now, but large hand, he would grab and he could overlap. So that's what you have to look out for. If you have a large hand, you learn to use one knuckle. You learn to use one knuckle. You learn to use one knuckle. You don't hit with the entire fist. You let one knuckle do the job. 361 places. I look at eye sockets. I look at you. I see all these eyes. And I want to stick them. <laughs> That's what this is about. If I hit, I overlap. If I go like that, I do damage. But I could just take two fingers and just whip it in the eye socket. And he would go like this. Correct? That's the way it is with the pressure points. You have to be within 25 cents, 10 pence, a coin. It doesn't take much accuracy. Your accuracy comes with your mind in your practice. You focus. Focus to martial artists in the past meant just focus to the center. That's not what it means. It means to focus on a given pressure point that you are going to attack. 25 years ago, I started teaching pressure points. Nobody believed it. I went in and knocked everybody out, am I right? Yeah, yeah, everybody. And, 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 <laughs> in, Finland, in Finland, 
180 people at the seminar, I knocked down about 100. <laughs> they all wanted to feel it, am I right? They all wanted to feel it, they lined up. And I said, well, I can't speak Finnish. In fact, they can't even speak Finnish. <laughs> I said, not you, you can. Yeah. But I said, did you ever see Finnish writing? Huh? Oh, God. They just keep adding to the words. Yeah, they don't change. Right? Yeah. They have words as long. <laughs> you know, they don't do television, remote control. They use television, remote control, all one word. And then if you have another word, they add it on to it. They just keep that word going. They don't let it go. But anyway, I used to knock everybody out. And we don't do that. If you believe in it, if you don't believe, we'll come over and do it. But I mean, you'll find out this weekend you'll be a believer because we have three days to go. But I used to walk in and we'd be rough. But I scared a lot of people off too. They would get scared. And they'd head for home. The, uh, in Italy, I went to Italy, and uh, he had me do a demonstration. Baruch's coming, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. When do you see Baruch? He's a huge guy, big muscle guy. And I get to Italy, and he says to me, we're doing a demonstration Friday night. The whole town, half the town's coming for the bleachers of the high school. The mayor's coming. City council, they'll all be there. And we're going to have all these demonstrations. And he said, you have to demonstrate your art. First time, I'm in there. And I don't demonstrate this stuff, I just hit them. <laughs> so, I didn't have any students. I'm all alone. And... He tells me demonstration. I'm sitting at the table. I go, what's the name? Sitting at the table going, what am I going to do for a demonstration? I have nothing to do. They won't understand what I do. They don't speak English. And I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Baruch comes in. You'll see him tomorrow. And he had two muscle guys with him. And Baruch comes up to me and goes, George Gilman. I went, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I must tell you, I am here, and I respect your teaching, but he says, I must tell you, I do not believe in the knockout and that the pressure points will work. I said, oh. Do you want to be in my demonstration? <laughs> he said, demonstration? I said, yeah, do you want me to do a demonstration? And I said, I need people for the demonstration. Will you help? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I will help. I said, how about your two students? Well, they help. They're standing there like this. They said, yeah, we'll help. Right? I go to him. I said, I have a demonstration. I have three people. So they're ready to start, and they marched everybody out by country. All the countries, Italy, with a flag. They had all the flags. France, Switzerland, they all had flags. United States, I came out alone. But they had a flag, and a flag, they had all the flags. He says, Baruch comes over to me, he says, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Everybody's practicing. They were all in the back room. Hiya, hiya, hiya. I said, we don't practice. I said, don't worry about it. He said, well, let's practice. I said, don't worry. Time for my demonstration. He translated, told the people I teach pressure points, and I got a few people and put them down. One pressure point here, one pressure point there. So Baruch is a big nervous wreck because we didn't practice. I said to Baruch, I said to a student, what do you like to do? What do you mean, he says. I said, how do you like to fight? Oh, he goes, I'm good on the ground. I ground now. I, I said, what do you do? He said, I take you to the ground and then we fight. 
I said, good. You take me to the ground. That's all I need. He said, it might hurt. I said, don't worry. You won't feel it that bad. <laughs> I said, what do you like to do? He said, I'm a puncher, the other guy. I said, good. I said, you take me to the ground, and you punch me. And Baruch says to me, I said, you're big. Baruch's big. I said, I want you to grab me and pick me up. And I said, we're going to simulate a real fight. So we go out before the crowd. He tells him, I'm going to simulate a real fight. I turn around, there's these three huge people. I said, let it happen. This guy dives. I go, bang. Down he goes. The other guy tries to punch. Boom, right out of the cotton. Knocked him out. Baruch picks me up. Boom, down he goes. All three are knocked out. <laughs> I was so excited about it, though I turned and knocked him out. <laughs> right? <laughs> I didn't have anybody to translate. <laughs> I forgot, he was my translator. Now I have four people knocked out. And I forgot I had to wake him up. <laughs> and he's my translator. Because every time you were feeling around the points, half of you would be doing the point, half of you were near it. You can't be near the point, you're going to be on the point. Everybody understand that? Take your finger. Take your finger and go beside your nose. So you're trying to get under your own nose. What? You don't pick your boogies. It's a perfect opportunity here. You went under the side of the nose. That's where the large intestine meridian ends. Can I use you? The guy grabs you and muscles you. He muscles you in. I love this point because it proves there's not a nerve ending there. That's strictly chi energy. You're not on a nerve. He muscles you in. You put this knuckle as if you're trying to get out under his nose. And don't you go anywhere unless I make you. And you drill and you get nothing. He feels only the action. But he does not get the neurological pain. Because there's not a nerve ending there. But that's the ending of the large intestine meridian where the energy flows. When you touch his arm on large intestine, ah, the fight is over immediately. You're going to do that. You're going to do that with each other, not so aggressively. You're going to have the person grab you. When they grab you, you can do this. You can do this. Large intestine meridian crosses and ends on each side of your nose. This is excellent to teach women in a rape situation because if they're knocked down on their back, the man has to have one arm on the ground. And if we were on the back and he had an arm on the ground and it were this arm, I only have to touch it as I touch here. We spark between the two. And the person will fly off you. You practice that back in your dojos. The person will go off to the side of the arm because this arm will bend in. As I do this, you'll see that this arm will want to bend on you and he'll fall off that direction. Without touching the arm, nothing. He still feels it, but you're not going to get a release. And he probably didn't expect the shock he was going to get because that's the shock that takes place. He thought, I can take that. Your opponent will too. The minute you touch and go, the spark flies. Am I correct? Yes. At this point, anything I wanted to do, if I wanted to just drop on stomach five or hit on the neck, he's going to fall. You have to watch because he would go down head first. You have to watch that standing because their head's going to go like that, and you do not want them to fall and injure them. All you're going to do have the person grab you. Touch him at the nose. Nothing. 
touch here, and you got control of the situation. You got control of the situation. If you hit, if you hit the arm and go here, this move is in kata. It will put the person out, but the whole arm will cramp up on you because you have struck a pressure point and you've struck a pressure point. Two pressure points, the pain meets in the middle. When you do one pressure point, the pain is localized. When you do two pressure points, it meets in the middle. The first time I had it done on me was by Hohan Sokin in 1972. He rubbed me here and punched me in lung one, and when I went down, I was afraid to look at my own arm. I actually thought it was broke. I told one of my students, he broke my arm. What do you mean, they said, where did he break it? I said, the elbow, the elbow's got to be, I was afraid to even look. It felt like he went <laughs> and took it in half. <coughs> the pain will meet in the middle twice the amount of pain. <coughs> if you do one pressure point here, you do one pressure point here, the pain's really coming this way, trying to meet each other. Everybody get up and do that real quick. The nerve, the actual nerve, is one thumb away from your nose, this direction. One thumb away. Got that? Let me use you, Mr. Man, who didn't feel it. <laughs> when you are doing the pressure part, you got nerve, you have chi energy you're using. You just did, was everybody successful with that? Yes? yes if you weren't, you have to practice it. That's what it works on everybody. You're messing with their chi energy. Is all you're messing. You're, you're taking two pieces where chi should finish and flow. You do not have a nerve there. The one thumbnail away is a nerve. And now let's say he grabs me. I do want him to grab the microphone. You gotta do that in the fight. Excuse me, I have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but he grabs you and he muscles you in. Maybe you're only a one arm man. So I'll put this arm here. For some reason you can't touch. You now don't go there. You go one thumb away to the face. Got that? You go one, one thumb away. And you're on pure nerve. And you can do what you want to him from there. Keep in mind, I still would use the other hand. I'm just showing you how simple it is. This, you don't need to touch the arm. But with the chi, you need to touch the arm. And it's just one thumb away. One thumb away. And you control the person. If you get somebody down in ground grappling, that's all you have to do is rest this thumb. Right here. And bring it into that hole as you grab their face. And you can right on the nerve. What I want you to do, I want you to hurt each other, but I want you to get up. One side is going to grab the other. You can keep your arms in front of you. You don't have to put it in your belt. Stand up here. Come. One. Thumbnail away, go in and cut that direction because that's where the Y is in the nerve. There's a little tiny Y to the seventh facial nerve. And when you cut into it, you really are pulling the energy from up where he wears his glasses and down where his nose is, and it goes into the nerve and it actually affects the eye. If you've seen everybody I did it to, seriously, they get up and their vision is temporarily messed up because it passes the message that quick into the optic nerve. And if your opponent can't see, he can't fight. So I have a lot of techniques I like to just touch and do and involve the, the vision. You have a couple things in you that are animalistic. If you can't breathe, I don't care who you are, you will back out of a fight. If you can't see, you will back out of a fight. If you're in the middle of anything and all of a sudden you can't see and you can't breathe, you will try to save yourself, and you will back out. And that is one that messes with vision. I also have some just as quick 
you touch your mess, it's breathing up. He can't breathe. He can't breathe in, he can't breathe out. The fight's over. It takes one second to do it. That's why Q Shou Jitsu, one second fighting. So now what you're gonna do, they grab you. It could be one hand or two hands, it doesn't matter. And if they muscle you in, that's better yet. You go one thumb away and you aim that direction. Right there. And the head will turn. Everybody try it. Fingers right here, you'll feel a hole, an indent. Put your fingers right here. It's where a Fu man two mustache would do down. Put you down. You're gonna go in that hole and aim that way. No matter who. They're gonna grab you. This one is perfect if they have you pinned up against the wall. This works best if it, somebody that bounced you in and has you trapped. So if you're near a wall, let them put you to the wall. <clears throat> because when you're actually thrown into a wall and pinned against it by a larger person, there isn't much you can do. There are certain pressure points naturally you can do. But this is one of them. Because I don't care who it is, the harder he pushes this way, the more this is going to hurt him. You're going to go in to where I just showed you, and you're only going to turn your hand that way now. You're going to go in right here at stomach four and aim that direction, and the head is going to turn that way. If I go in on this side, the head's going to turn that way. What would happen with those nerves stretched if I decided to punch him right about now? You understand? You'd probably break his neck. You'd probably injure and break his neck, especially if you hit triple warmer at this point, because you have the seventh facial nerve as stretched as it can get. You're not going to hit anybody there. But as they stand up and they move against you, you just rest the finger there and you're going to go like this. If you're on this side, the head's going to turn that way. If you're on that side, it's going to turn that way. That pressure point, like this one releases the wrist, this releases the elbow, that releases the wrist, the neck, I mean. In ground grappling, you have to be careful to use that. Taro reminded me when I first met him in Sweden, I walked, I think it was at the boat, wasn't it? No, no, it was in train, like a wall of tape. I walked up and knocked him out on that nerve. I said, how you doing? And I hit him and knocked him out on that nerve. I have been known to do things to people in public. You understand that? I had a man in a pub up in Canada. Say, are you sure this works? And then he was down, and I go, hello, hello? He goes, I guess it really works. <laughs> you're going to go in here, and you're just going to do this. I don't care how strong he thinks his neck is. He can lock his neck. It can be strong. I didn't have him grab me because it would hurt him. If he resists and pins you in, and you do this, it's going to release that neck. You could actually just continue to break the neck with somebody else's technique they showed you this weekend. Or you could just take him out that side. If I hit him that direction, now you're going to probably kill him. Probably kill him. You're going to break the jaw off, sure. So it's an instant self-defense. Somebody pinch you, you touch, aim that way. You touch, aim that way. Everybody try it. Nerve. Mental frame of nerve. And chi energy. You can mess that up many ways. You have to be careful. A lot of forms that I do that strike this way, I have that little knuckle that would go in that hole. And actually, if you struck hard, if the person had you hard, I think you'd break or sprain the neck with the strike. Because it releases the neck, you felt it. That's just from doing this. The harder he thinks he can hold you, the tougher he thinks he can hold you, the easier it's going to take him out. Got that? When I get in my study, if you get the book called Gray's Anatomy, Physi physiology book, but of Grey's Anatomy, not the TV show. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. But in Grey's Anatomy, it's a perfect picture of three nerves here. Three nerves here. Not these now, but between here and here, you have one, two, three. You see three little yellow dots coming up in there. That's the nerves that if somebody can take a shot, as a boxer, you have nerve that comes here, but it goes deep. It goes deep. If you cannot take a shot there, you have what they call a glass jaw. 
Not much you can do about it. You were born with a nerve too close to surface, here. And when I went into boxing training, and I used it on my students that would kickbox, I used it on Billy Blanks when he was going to fight for real. And you have him bite on a terry cloth towel, and you hit him under the jaw. If they can stay there and take it, they can then be a fighter. If you have a terry cloth towel in their mouth so they don't injure their teeth and their jaw, and you just give them a decent wrap, and they get dizzy, they're not going to take it. The nerve is too close to surface. But that nerve comes up and ends like that. You got that? First Graham, I'll show Graham. Oh, swear. You like to be hit the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> you got this side of the body is yin. Now I have to be careful how I do this. I used to just do this. Early on, I used to convince people three pressure points would knock somebody out. I used to tell them that. Early on, some of the people that are not even in my organization don't want to tell you, but they were knocked out with a ballpoint pen. I took a ballpoint pen, just went doink, and they pass out. Some people have a hard time dealing with that, that you can knock them out so easy. That's how easy it happens, so if you know the nerves, you know the pressure points and you have 361 places to attack, and each one's as big as the 10 pence or a US dollar. But you have three nerves, not here now, but you feel here and you feel a little nobule. You feel a little nobule right there. Go dead center, right here, and you'll feel like a little, like you have a pimple. That's where the nerve ends. People come up and they say, well, I, I ask them, how would you hit this guy? And they tell me I'd hit him with an uppercut. I'd hit him with a right cross. I'd hit him with a left cross. If I hit him with an uppercut, keep your teeth together. He can take that. He has a deep nerve there. If he would have passed out there, I wouldn't have gone any further with my, my thing. But the three points that close together, one in the middle, one quarter inch here, one a quarter inch here, in this indent. This side of his body is yin. That side of his body is yang. I need a nice yin lady. Come here. You seen yin? I was looking people over. <laughs> Take your finger. Take your finger. You're going to hold it. You're going to hold that point. So they want to get it on the camera. Let me place it. I'm the one who knows this. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's falling in love with you. <laughs> no, you're right there. Okay, now a little pressure down that way. That's it. I need a good yang. Yang for you. You've seen one of the yang individual. You're going to stand off the side here, right here. You're going to take this finger. Now, this is the ideal situation because. I got yin holding the yin side, yang holding the yang side, and I take that finger, and we just go in the middle to hunt, right there. <laughs> All right? You were impressive. get dilated. You know it's a knockout. Stay there. You have moves in classes. <laughs> you have moves in classes in attack. That's why. You have to be careful because at the same time it has to be a serious situation because you can injure the neck 
with too hard of a hit because that releases the neck down and when the spine comes up can snap and cause what would be a whiplash in an automobile accident. So you don't just hit that spot, but I just poked at it to show you how weak it is right there. Early on, I used to do that in seminars with pens. Ballpoint pen with the, with the point in, not the point out. And I'd have you hold a pen, you hold a pen. I'd take a third pen and go doink, and down they would go. Because I was trying to convince people, one pressure point causes pain, and it's area pain. Two pressure points cause the pain to meet in the middle. Three pressure points causes somebody to blank out. I used him because he was up behind the camera, and nobody had been hitting him. <laughs> well, I didn't want anybody that we were wailing on, or that you were doing this and doing this and doing that. So I wanted to uh, use a fresh face. Was anybody hitting on you? Oh, come over here. <laughs> I have moving cut that goes like this. It's one of my uh, favorite techniques. Because when I learned that moving cut, oh, do you volunteer? Huh? No, it's just. Oh, you can. Will you raise your hand? I have. Only if you need to. Oh, you don't raise your hand when I'm looking around the room. Right. You don't care who we do it to. But I have a movement in the country goes like this. And when I learned it, they actually tried to tell me I'm blocking big people punching. He's a pretty big guy. He's punching, and I'm blocking the big guy punching. Who punches up there? <laughs> Even if you're punching a little guy, you're punching here. If you're punching a little guy, you're punching his face. If I'm going to punch one of these kids, I ain't going to go like that. I'm going to go like that. Am I correct? Yeah. You're not blocking the big person punching. They grab you and muscle you. Let's go over here. Beautiful view for the camera. Don't interrupt the mic. <laughs> and we use the back of the arm, and we touch the bridge of the nose. We touch triple warmer, and we lift this cock for gallbladder. And the more he muscles me in, I just simply do this. Up, 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 up. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up. Let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. He's still out. <clears throat> I got him. I got him. Don't pull on the fingers too soon. Don't pull on the fingers too soon. You re-put them out. Most people that do the healing don't jump in and start pulling and pushing on things until you know he's back. Then you redo energy. The pupils are huge. You see the pupils? <laughs> the pupils are huge. Not a pupils catching. is this. Next move is this. You're really not even going to let him fall. You're going to break his neck. Moves in kata were created to kill people. Actually kill people. The notes I was left by Hohan Sokin. He gave me a set of notes. 90% of the instruction is death. The rest was me working on it to drop out a technique or two. To leave it out, because you cannot go out today in a self-defense situation and kill somebody. In the early days when this was thought up and dreamed up, it was fantastic. In fact, if I had come back to the village and told you I killed him, you'd have a party that night for me. <laughs> Congratulations. But today, you'll be going to jail. So I've worked real hard at the art into making it knock out. If you knock him out, or even get him just dizzy, if I tap you and you're dizzy, and you're in a state of dizziness, then I could hit you again if I wanted to. I could break that neck. These points release the neck. I got you dizzy. If I just took the neck, you had no control, did that, then I would kill you. That was what was in the cutlass. A lot of people talked about stomach nine. Stomach nine this weekend. I was watching. Stomach nine needs to be attacked on a 45 degree up. 
People are talking down over here. I'll hit him in stomach nine. You have a muscle, the sternal, colloidal, mastoid muscle that goes from the base of the skull to the tip of your collarbone. Who can I use? I need a tall. You want me to use you? Yeah. Right here, that muscle. In front of that muscle, and we'll turn him around, but at one third, one third from the bottom of everyone's neck in this room, if he's a short guy with a short neck, that's one third. If he's got a taller neck, that's one third. It's one third from the base where it touches the collarbone, right there. And when I say approximate, you have the whole 10p to tap. You only need to touch it. And if you do it correctly, up on an angle, the fight is over. Not down. Down is only correct if you use stomach 9 and 10. I have a DVD just about that. DVD KL-1 on uh, my chart teaches that very clear because everybody that was trying to copy what I did because I did something on stomach nine ran out going stomach nine, stomach nine, stomach nine, stomach, that's all they knew. And they were teaching it wrong. You make a hand and you take that knuckle. And you actually just let it climb, like that. It would be best if the person was taller than you. It's going to be a bigger, taller person that grabs this young lady, or grabs somebody smaller. When they grab you, you just take this edge of that knuckle, and you're going to tap very lightly. You're going to do this to each other, but I want as light as you can tap. He can muscle me all he wants to muscle me, and I'm just going to tap right there, and he's away. That's a light tap. What sensation do you still feel? How about your arm? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Yeah, sit down a minute. Pupils are dilated. You're a standing knockout. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down if they grab you with one hand, well, grab with this hand. What's the microphone? You, you tap on this side. If you grab with that hand, then it would tap on that side. But I wanted it clear for the camera. If he grabs with two hands, you can hit tap on either side. You only need to tap up. So you, I would lower down. He's, he's, I thought he was taller than this. But he's about my height. That'll help. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> That'll level you. He grabs. He grabs. I would lower down. I'd probably do this. I'd probably make like I'm trying to fight out of the situation to scare him. But he's intimidating me, so he's thinking... That that technique doesn't hurt. I'm only showing you because I want to get that knuckle, not the hand. And, and you don't need to do that. That makes it worse. And all I want to do is clip. I would lower and clip like that. That's all I would do. Bang! And then we would take this off and throw him down. Because the neck will release. And we would rip that on called bladder, triple warmer, and right to the floor. So what I want you to do, one side will grab the other. You cannot tap both sides. When you tap one side, stay on it. I'm okay to hit him there. I don't want to hit him over here. I'll explain that in a minute. So get up and just do it very lightly. Actually, we have several things we can do. Nine and ten's in and down. But I'm not teaching that right now. But nine and ten actually top in and down the strike. You see, there's a cut that goes here. You're dropping this. You're dropping this in and down on 9 and 10. 
if you do that kata. If you don't do that kata, why, why do you care? <laughs> well, the thing is, kata establishes it. If I'm practicing a kata once, twice, four times a week, and I'm doing this, and I'm focusing on nine and ten, when I'm grabbed, I will then do that all. If you don't do some of the moves that we teach in kata or form, and you go out of here, you'll forget about the move. It's that simple. When everybody turns their head, head there's a pressure point that lies in this V. If I just touch yeah. it, he feels it. And that's a touch pressure point. You can actually just take your loose hand like this. Loose hand like this. And you let the bottom touch at the base of his neck. This does not work if you have a small hand and he has a large neck. If somebody pulls you in, I do one of the other techniques. But if he has a technique that my hand can fit in, and this can touch the bottom, this can touch stomach six, this will touch right up where gallbladder comes in and mess up energy and point. And it's just done like that. All right? It's done with a smack. And if you're looking, his pupils got huge. You see them? They just went like that. That means his vision's messed up. And he staggered. No hit there. I did not have him grab me because that would injure him. So if he grabs me and I just go like that, we can injure him. And I didn't want to do that. So no grab and ball. Some people see me hit somebody and they go, well, he wasn't fighting. Yeah, if I do that technique when he's fighting, it's going to injure him. If you want to get mad and angry and me do one of these on you, we can certainly play that game now because it will hurt you more. It's just when you're in a relaxed state, it, like that, it, you demonstrate it. That's how we would teach you. Thank you. So when you... <laughs> we used to practice with... Uh, stomach 9 and 10. Wait, let me use you. Yeah. No, this is not a knockout. Oh. <laughs> no, I'll show you how. When we started practice at pressure points, I used to have my students take their knuckles, these two knuckles, and put them on their own 9 and 10, so they felt where they were. And if you put your hand, a lot of people try to defend by doing this. In fact, I've been to seminars where I go to do something, and somebody goes like this. I'm just so tempted to hit them. Because you knock their hand into their own pressure point. But if he wiggles that, he'll feel. I did that so he knows 9 to 10. And he just goes right in here, right there. that back in the dojo, it's somewhat easy to practice because they're reaching across their own body. They're yin and yang in themselves. They've messed up their own electricity. And they're, and I ain't going to do it to me, but you, you place them right on it. And then you just go, oh. And they actually hit their own pressure points in the knuckles. So if you try that back in the dojo, be careful, play with it light, hit light at first. So they don't drop. I wanted to see that he went down for sure. <laughs> well, we have a camera going. Yeah, when the camera's gone, I get my guns going. And we let the guns out of the uh, holster. But if you were watching, 9 and 10 was this. I hit his hand even in and down to make sure he got a little bit of energy in and down. So if you see the doctor that does this, and you see that, You'll know more about that person's cockpit than they will know. 
Not that it's formed, deliver the angle and direction to which that's the pressure. Boys, you'll hear here all weekend. But that's what maps out the human body. And every form, it started 750 years ago. First form was created in Tai Chi to map out the angle and direction to hurt the human body. From that form came everybody's pattern. I don't care if you're Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Philippine art, and they made a kata up, it came with the same moves. There's only so many moves the human body can make. And as you're making them, you're recording the angular direction that you attack the human body. Everybody having a good time at this camp? Yes. Yes. You have a lot of good instructors. A lot of good instructors. I'll be saying that here in a few minutes, but uh, I'm proud of the people that we had on the mat. And we can do this now all over the world. When I first started teaching, I was on a lonely path trying to get this across to people. And we talked about it with Terrell because I was a lot rougher. I didn't put your hand like that. I didn't make a joke with it. I went into Finland and, and we had 180 people and I think I knocked out like at least 100. Didn't I not? Yes. The man picked me up at the airport, his instructor. And he said to me on the way to the seminar, he says, we have 180 people. And he says, what will you do if somebody picks on you? I said, what? <laughs> he said, this is a true story. What will you do if they are going to do and attack you at the seminar? I said to him, how close is your hospital? <laughs> what do you mean? I said, from the seminar to the hospital, how far? 10, 15 minute drive. I said, good, if they attack me, you'll be taking them to that hospital. So be ready. But anyway, I had to be rough with it. Then I had to back off and just convince you you can do it. Everybody here. One, one knockout. You what? Yeah, one knockout. I don't do but one knockout. What do you want to do? I'm I'm not very well two long days. Yeah. Okay, just wait till we're done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we got promotions to do. We have capital. He wants to hit somebody. <laughs> this is my time on the floor. How many people here want to knock somebody else out? You want to do it, do it, do it tomorrow. We'll teach you how and you do it. In fact, I just did teach you how. Tomorrow, now nobody else do that, but tomorrow, I'm going to let you put your hand like that. Stand up. I'm going to let you put your hand like that on each, not on me. He's a quick learner. But I, 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 you won't hit it hard. You're only going to do this. You're only going to do that. That's all. And then you feel the buzz. He's not really in on the points. And you'll feel a little buzz. You feel it? Mm -hmm. And you're dizzy? That's all you need to do at the dojo. If I really stepped in and do that to him, it's going to drop him, but you could injure him. That's a very serious point. Because stomach 9 and 10 drops the person's blood pressure 20 points immediately. Immediately. That's why I muffled it. If you have high blood pressure, every night before you go to bed, you should massage stomach 9 and 10 down, like this. That will help lower your blood pressure. You better understand that. <coughs> the minute you hit somebody on 9 and 10, it drops it 20 points, that's a medical book. What you don't know is, it starts back up like a geyser. <coughs> and as it starts back up, it can break a blood vessel and cause a cerebral hemorrhage. Got that? That's why you have to be, no, he won't have that. That's why I muffle it. That's why I haven't put a hand <coughs> and tap it. I would rather you just go like this and feel the sensation. Okay, everybody else? 